Well, hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Dreams Guy podcast. My name is John Thomas and I'm the Dreams Guy. It feels so weird every time I say that, but <laughs> I guess that's what I do. So that works. And we are in for another episode where we have a live dreamer. So we're going to be talking through a, a dream, a recent dream and walking through what it might mean and giving you guys some pointers about dream interpretation. So I have my friend, Jessica, Jessica Quiros, who <laughs> is now part of our family. And we're mm. so excited that she's here. So Jessica, let, let's start out. How long ago did you have this dream? I had the dream uh, September of 2021 last year. Okay. Yes. September 2021. All right, and then tell us what, what happened in the dream. So I had the dream um, a Friday night because uh, I remember we had academy that night and I remember that somebody prayed for me because I just really wanted to hear from the Lord and I, the dreams were not as common as they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, I thought he wasn't going to actually give me a dream <laughs> that night, if I'm being honest. Um, so my, this is my dream. So my dream is that I am um, in a beautiful garden. It, it feels very peaceful and serene. And I'm dressed in white. Mm. And I have a beautiful flowy dress. And I have on ballerina shoes. And I see this tree. And it's a perfect tree. Um, it's tall. The leaves, the, it's it's very they're very um, lush mm. and very full. And I see a lot of animals that eat meat, uh, that don't, and both. And they're just getting along. They're around the tree, on the tree. And then I have this red cloth in my hands. And I begin to dance like a ballerina in front of the tree. Then scene changes. And I see Jesus and he tells me something, but I don't remember what he tells me. Then scene changes again, and I see a tent, what you would consider a, 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 like a mod, not a modern, but a tent. Okay. And it's made out of leather, but it looks new. But at the same time, it looks ancient okay. and very alluring. And I know I have to go inside. It's like calling me. Mm -hmm. And once I go there, well, before that, I'm not able to see what's inside because I know I have to go inside of the tent. So once I go, I open up the flap and I didn't know what this was called. I actually had to look it up. Um, I see the, is it called the shrew table? The table of... the show, Yeah, the show table, the show bread. Yes. The table of show bread. Yes. yes. Okay. And then I also see the incense. Yeah. Uh, and then I see a, a, a thick curtain. And, and the walls are just so beautiful. Um, they're made of gold. Yeah. But it's just like like a shiny bronze gold. It's just very beautiful and very... The carvings were very beautiful inside. Wow. Um, and I can't see past the curtain mm. and dream ends. Wow. That's a fun dream. Mm. That's a really fun dream. Okay, so let me see if I can repeat it back. So it starts out, you're in this garden beautiful area mm -hmm. and you see this beautiful tree and you're standing there you're in this beautiful flowing white dress you have like ballerina shoes on and you notice how how beautiful the tree is and then you start noticing all of these animals there are all kinds of animals and they're around the tree some of them are on the tree but everything is at peace yes. everything there's light it feels good and you have this red cloth in your hands and you start dancing like a, a, ball a ballet kind of style mm -hmm. dancing like this, you know, dance with this cloth. And as you do that, the scene changes mm -hmm. and you see Jesus and he tells you something. But when you wake up, you can't remember what it was that he yeah. said in the dream. Everything seemed normal, mm -hmm. but then it's lost as you're waking up. Then the scene changes one more time and you're looking at this tent and it kind of, it looks like you would think a tent would look like, but it has the feeling of being ancient and yet everything is clean, like it's brand mm, new yes. and it's like leather. And you look inside the flap of the tent and you can see the table is showbread and you said you saw the lampstand? Um, 
or just the table of showbread. And I remember seeing the curtain. And what else? You, uh, there was one more thing I thought. Is it called the, the table of incense? Whenever the incense. Yes. 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 Okay. The altar of incense. Yes. And everything was just carved. It was gold. It was beautiful. You couldn't see past the curtain, mm -hmm. but something was just drawing you yes. in. And that was the end of the dream. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is... There are so many fun little things about this. So you had this in September. Now we had our academy was the second weekend of September. So it is like the 17th, 18th. It was right around there, mm -hmm. that, that period of time. That was one week before the Feast of Tabernacles. Oh, wow. The next weekend was the Feast of Tabernacles, which was going through. Wow. Which is this invitation to come into the presence of the Lord. Like, hey, we're just wow. temporary here. And it was this call mm. to intimacy. And you saw the tabernacle. Mm. And so my friend, uh, Charity Bowman Webb, you're going to get to meet her, actually. She's going to be here mm. this year twice. So oh, you, you'll get to meet her when she comes. She, she talks about the, the different times the tabernacle pattern shows up in scripture. The first time it shows up is in the garden, mm -hmm. in the very beginning. And so the garden represents that intimacy, that peace with God, that mm -hmm. communion with God, the tree, seeing the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Everything is at peace. All of creation is at peace. You're at peace with yourself. Mm -hmm. You're at peace with God. You, you recognize the beauty that he's put in you and you're able to just demonstrate it in that dance and in that freedom. Mm -hmm. And that brings you into this communion where you recognize the Lord is talking to you. Even when you don't remember what it is that he says, mm -hmm. he is talking to you. He is meeting you and he is calling you deeper. You've just come into the first room of mm -hmm. the tabernacle. You've seen, you, you've recognized the bread of his presence, which the, the table is showbread. It's also called the table of the face. Oh, wow. It's the face of God. It, it's, it represents all that Jesus is and all that Jesus did. That place of healing and that place of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of uh, the sacrifice and the communion that we have with him. And the altar of incense, that place of, of prayer. And in the in this experience, you don't necessarily see the menorah, no. and, right? Mm -hmm. Which the more, menorah represents kind of prophetic revelation. Mm -hmm. And you weren't hearing him prophetically in that season. Mm -hmm. But you were still meeting him in his presence. And you were still meeting him in the place of prayer. And he was mm -hmm. letting you know that that's how he is drawing you in this season. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's fun. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> I want to dream like that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> oh, that's that's really cool. So how do I how do I respond in a in a God? I want yeah. more. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it it's having that hunger, right? It, but in the dream, it's letting you know that even if it's not what you want, mm -hmm. the menorah, mm -hmm. recognize that you're meeting Him. In these other ways, mm -hmm. you're meeting him in that place of his presence. You're meeting him in that place of intercession, that that's the focus right now. The prophetic will come mm -hmm. again, right? You've mm -hmm. been there, but it's going to come back. And so that that's there, but you are communing with him and you've stepped into the mm -hmm. place of blessing, mm -hmm. right? You stepped into that place of freedom. And so there, there's a confidence that that dream was imparting to you. And so mm -hmm. thank him for what he is doing mm -hmm. and help him to, I mean, ask him to help you, <laughs> not help him. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Let me clarify what I mean. <laughs> ask him to help you to have ears to hear and that you would recognize what he is doing, but also that you would focus on what he is doing and not get caught up in what he's not doing. Mm -hmm. Because in the dream, this all felt good. Yes. You weren't noticing in the dream. You weren't like, but where's the menorah? Why can't I see it? Like, you don't even see that until afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like waking up, thinking about it. You're like, well, yeah, actually. Like, why wasn't that there? Mm. Because that's not the point. Mm. The point is not what's not there. The point is what is there. Mm. Um, and so pressing in 
like there, there's a, the, you know, the other thing, the bread of the presence, because it represents the body and the blood of the Lord, it represents that sacrifice. It represents healing. Mm-hmm. So you're in a place where the Lord is showing you his healing. He's showing you his healing anointing. And that's for you, but it's also for others. You're going to see more healings as you pray than you have in other seasons. And there's going to be fruit from intercession. He's going to show you what to pray. He's drawing you in that altar of incense. That's the place of intercession. Mm -hmm. Um, There's more that's beyond that. But this is the season that you're in right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So press into those things. Mm -hmm. So perhaps the next season would be behind the curtain. Possible. Mm -hmm. It's not clear in the dream. So if God is saying that, then, then you go there. But you can't assume that unless in the dream, like if in the dream, you're like, I knew that I was going to go behind the curtain, but you hadn't gotten there yet, Mm -hmm. then that would say that. Mm -hmm. But in the dream, it's just about where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. So just knowing the ways of God, he's always drawing us deeper. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. But there's nothing in the dream that would tell you that. Okay. Yeah. And then um, me forgetting uh, what Jesus told me. Yes. That was obviously done purposefully, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> that, that was. Well, and there's two things. Um, it, cause that it ties into the, the connection of not seeing the menorah and the prophetic and the revelation. He is speaking mm. to you, even though you're not recognizing it. He's speaking into your spirit, your mind. It's not about what your mind is getting. And it's not about what your gift is receiving. Your spirit is being fed. Mm. It's real. You're just not, you're not getting the message with your mind, but you Mm. are getting the message. Your spirit is getting the message. And so it's that the principle in Job 33, where it says he seals their instruction so he, he gives us a dream, he gives us something, and then he seals it so we don't remember it. It's, it's there, mm-hmm. but we can't access it until the right time. And everything that he's sown in us in those seasons, in the right moment, they awaken, they open up, and we step into that. Mm-hmm. And so everything that he's been speaking, he's still speaking as much as he was before, just in different ways. And it's going into your spirit. You're just not recognizing it. And in the right season, it's all there and it's all available. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Mm. Would it help if I would recognize it, even though I'm not? Like in the season, would it help? Would So let me clarify the question. Mm -hmm. Are are you asking, would it help you Mm -hmm. to recognize what he is saying with your mind in this season? Mm -hmm. No. Because he's doing what he wants to do. It's the best thing for you. Mm. What will help is going back to the first scene. Just recognize the beauty that he's put in you and find that place of freedom where you just express your worship before the Lord, that freedom, that dance, that, that grace, you know, that we talk about ballerinas, they're so graceful, their, their movements, their, and, and, and the, the message Bible, Eugene Peterson uses this phrase. I can't remember which of Paul's letters, but he says the unforced rhythms of grace. Mm. And you're, you're dancing with the Lord. You're holding on to the redemption that he's purchased. You are clean before him. Mm-hmm. And you're before his presence. I mean, that that the tree of life, it's, talking, it's going back to the Garden of Eden, but it's also the promise. In Revelation, it says, to he who overcomes, I will give to him the right to eat of the tree of life. Mm-hmm. And so you're being brought into that. You're seeing like that, that's that. You're, you're just in that freedom, just worship. Just abandon yourself. Let yourself go. Recognize you're clean. You, you've you been redeemed. Mm-hmm. And you are free to worship him. And he's going to draw you into everything that you need as you need it. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. That's a mm-hmm. really fun dream. It's <laughs> so good. Wow. Well, guys, thanks for joining us for this episode. I, I'm... 
This one was a little bit short, but man, it was packed full of stuff. Here's one of the fun things that you can take away from this. As you press into scripture, it'll be easier and easier to recognize these themes, like the pictures of the Garden of Eden and recognizing the tabernacle and the pieces of the tabernacle. Having that foundation in scripture, it just gives us something that we can grab hold because a lot of times when God is speaking, there's allusions to what he's already said. It's pointing us back to something that he's already said. So the more we know scripture, the the wider um, the more tools that we have at our disposal mm -hmm. when he speaks to figure out how to respond and what it is that he's saying. Mm -hmm. So that's a great lesson to learn. Guys, thanks for joining us for this episode of the Dreams Guy podcast. I'm John Thomas, and we will see you next time around. <laughs>